Hey, it's Mark Spencer from Ripple Training here with a couple quick tips on how to use the RT adjustment layer effect as part of the Ripple Tools collection. So here I am in Final Cut Pro 10. I'm in the Titles browser in the Ripple Tools collection, and here is the RT adjustment layer. The way to think of the RT adjustment layer is kind of like a container for adding color corrections, effects, and transformations that can be applied to multiple clips at the same time. Now, a lot of these things you can do in other ways in Final Cut Pro 10, but this gives you uh, some interesting alternatives for doing this type of work. So for example, what I'm gonna do is uh, move my playhead over this clip, hit the X key to set a range, select the RT adjustment layer in the Titles browser, hit Q, and then I'm actually gonna extend it over both these clips because a big thing about the RT adjustment layer effect is uh, it affects anything underneath it. And that's true with all the Ripple tools, but with this one in particular, you can do some interesting things. So I'm gonna select it. Let's just look at these two clips. You can kind of see what they look like in the thumbnails, but here's what they look like in the viewer. It's two shots of the same talent in similar lighting situations. So any color corrections we do to one will probably apply to the other one. So where you have multiple shots that you wanna apply a color correction to, or apply effects or transformations, like you might want to scale them down to do a picture in picture in effect or something like that. Uh, this is a great way to do it. Of course, you can always color correct a clip directly and copy paste attributes to paste those color corrections. And you can also copy paste attributes for effects. But this gives you an interesting alternative. So with it selected, if you go to the title inspector, normally with most Ripple tools, you do a lot of your work in the title inspector. And we do have some different things in here that you can do. Uh, but this guy's a little different because most of the time you probably won't use what's in here, at least on first pass. Uh, except you might want to click on the Quip Tips checkbox to get some ideas of how to use it. Here's some different examples that you can always access. But what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to apply a color correction to this actual title layer, not to the clips beneath it, but to the title layer itself, and it will affect everything underneath it. So what I'm going to do is go to the Video Inspector, and then to Correction 1, and let's just do something simple. I'll go to saturation and I will desaturate this clip. So now we have kind of a black and white look. And maybe I'll also go to exposure and I'll kind of crush the blacks and bring up the whites, get a little more high contrast look here. Okay, now that I've done that, if I move the playhead over the other clip, I've done it to both. So I don't need to copy paste anything. Doing this one time does it to everything at once, which is really kind of cool. So that's one example of something that you can do to the RT adjustment layer, but basically anything you do to it affects anything underneath it. So another example is adding effects. So I'm gonna to go to the effects browser and just, there's one here called aged film. Maybe I'll drag that directly onto the adjustment layer. And then we kind of get this aged film look. You can see the lines and scratches there. I'm gonna turn that off and do something a little more obvious. I'll take the one called aged paper and drag it onto the adjustment layer. And now you can see that aged paper effect is applied to both. So pretty straightforward. Anything you apply to this adjustment layer applies to everything underneath it. And of course, you can then stretch it across another clip and it will apply to that clip as well. Or you can bring it back. And uh, anything you do to those effects, for instance, this aged paper has an amount you know, you could keyframe that to have it animate on or off just by setting keyframes for the amount slider. So let's just do that, for example. I'll go to the beginning, I'll set the amount to zero, I'll set a keyframe, I'll move forward in time and drag the amount to 100%. So now if I play through that, we can see that that kind of animates on. Okay, another thing uh, in the terms of the three categories of things you can do is transformations. So uh, to transform this, I could just use the video inspector. I could scroll down and there's position, rotation, and scale. So for instance, I could change the scale. I'll undo that. Uh, rather than doing that in the inspector, I can use the transform effect right here at the bottom left of the viewer. And then I get these little bounding box handles and I can click and drag so maybe I want this whole thing to be over up to the left because I want some other content in here. I want to kind of do a picture in picture effect. And now of course that applies to any clip. Let me just drag this over. So it applies to any clip that's underneath it. Very quick way to do this. No need to, you know, create compound clips or copy paste attributes or anything like that. It's just done. So once you've done something like this, at this point you may, I'm gonna exit the transform effect. You may want to go to the entitle inspector because there are some things in here that are useful. Uh, uh, rather than do those transformations there, we do have a scale control directly here. Now notice it's not scaling the clip, it's scaling the clip with inside the overall scale. So now I could 
change this position of the clip within uh, that little box that I've made. And of course that affects all of them. So uh, depending on what your content is, you need to make sure that it's appropriate for all of them. And you can also rotate the clip within that little box, anything that you want. If you want to add a background, you can choose show drop zone. Uh, and then there'll be a background that you can add to that clip. Now the trick here is the background is going to be scaled because we've scaled everything. So really the best way to do that, let's go back to the video and I'm going to reset the transformations just so it's full frame. Okay, now I'll go to the title inspector and this time I'm going to scale down the clip just within the title inspector. And Now you can see I've got that drop zone behind it. I'll scale it, I'll position it over, and what the heck, let's rotate it a little bit too. Okay, and that affects everything. And now with my show drop zone checked, I can choose to add some content behind that. And you will notice that that content is affected as well, um, which you may want. If you don't want that, I'll show you another way to accomplish a similar thing. Let's see if we've covered the main things here. Before I show you how to accomplish that, I do want to mention these pieces here. So in addition to this drop zone, we can ad adjust the drop zone position and the drop zone scale and the drop zone rotation by using these parameters. Or you can always double click on a drop zone. I'll hit command minus to zoom out a little bit. And then we can always adjust the drop zone directly uh, in the viewer as well by clicking and, and dragging on it right here. And I'll press escape and get out of that. And shift Z to fit it back to the window. Okay. Um, Again, before I go and show you how to have a background that's not affected by any effects, I do want to mention the shadows, midtones, and highlights. So to look at those, uh, let's uh, turn off this drop zone, and let's also go to our video tab and turn off the age paper effect, and let's also turn off our color correction. So back in the title inspector, these three color swatches allow you to do color corrections without using the color board, if you so choose. So let's go ahead and just reset so we get a full size image here. So what you can do, and this works exactly by the way, if I go back to the titles browser and look at Ripple tools, we have something called um, RT color balance right here. And this is basically allowing you to do RT color balance directly inside the RT adjustment layer effect. So I can choose my shadows and I get a color wheel and I can choose to darken those shadows down and maybe give them, maybe warm them up a little bit and I can choose the mid-tones, maybe brighten them up a little bit and also warm them up a little bit. And then I'll choose the highlights and maybe I'll lighten those up a little bit and warm them or cool them down. You've got a lot of different uh, options here for how you wanna use these, but it allows you basically to do some color corrections using uh, traditional color wheels without going to the color board directly inside of the uh, RT adjustment layer effect. And then there's a mix slider where you can choose whether or not you see that color correction. Okay, as a, a final piece here, I just wanna show you how you can add a background to uh, any clips that won't be affected by any effects or color corrections or transformations that you apply. So uh, here's kind of the trick behind that. What we're gonna do is uh, take this background and hit Q to make it a connected clip and drag it below. And all of this is necessary only if you don't want your background to be affected by other things, if you're doing other things besides transformations to your adjustment layer. So right now, for example, if I scale down this clip, uh, it's also scaling down the background. Uh, you can't tell because you can't see the background, but if I select this clip and press V to disable it, there's that connected clip underneath it. So anything I do to this adjustment layer affects everything underneath it which is often what you want. But if you don't want that to happen, all you need to do is select the adjustment layer and the clips that you do want to be affected, and we're gonna make them into a compound clip. So I'll choose File, New Compound Clip. I'll just call it Adjustment. And now you can see that it's separated from the background. Now let's actually select this background and in the Video Inspector, change the spatial conform from Fit to Fill, so it fills the screen. And now anything that we do to that adjustment layer will only affect uh, these clips that are inside the compound clip, these two clips. So to do that, we do need to double click on this to go to it. So here we are, so let's select it. 
let's add a uh, age paper effect again, just so we can do something obvious. There we go. And now if I go back to the overall project, we can see that our effect uh, has only affected those and not the background. So that's how you can handle that situation if you don't want the background to be affected. And those are a couple of tips on how to use RT adjustment layer effect in the Ripple Tools package. I hope that was helpful and thank you for watching.